interesting parts of uh, of the work that you do with the cars is when you do get that medium format out. Yeah, man. Like it's a, like I'm saying, it's a fucking different, definitely a different quality to them. The pictures, you know, like even as compressed and and like brought down by the quality of Instagram and on the phone and whatever, you know, like even still then you see a difference, you know, like if you mean a format and a regular camera. I think it's uh, the depth, of, there's depth in the pixels, man. That's it what just it is. somehow that's translates is. well. I think physically that's what it literally yeah, is. Yeah. The pixels are bigger, yeah. they're deeper. Yeah, yeah you know? for sure. So there's more information that comes in and and they have also the 16-bit raw files, yeah, man, which are insane. <laughs> yeah, there's they're massive, but they're like so like that's it. It's all you. That's all you need in a fucking picture. Dude, like, my dad has like floated this idea to me. He loves photography. He's obsessed with yeah. photography, and um, obsessed with my photography. And he's not a gearhead per se. Okay. But he knows the basics of good quality gear. Good yeah. glass. Yeah. Gotta yeah. have the glass. And um, and he's the one who convinced me to buy a Hasselblad medium format. Okay. He's like, just get one that works, start using it. So is it that one? That one right there, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this motherfucker. Man, it's been such a long time since I've touched a medium format. Yeah. Film medium format. It's really cool. Yeah, dude. It is uh, super fun to shoot with. Um, so these are the ones that they used to make back then, right? Yeah, yeah. This one, uh, I don't know if this exact unit was built then, but 1957 is when they actually started. Okay. And by 62, 63, they were like perfected like this. Like this. Know? So this is the 60s. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Like this one went to the moon, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. dude. <laughs> yeah, which, cool. is, which is nuts. And it's completely mechanical, which is brilliant. I know, man, it's a... Uh, yeah, you got it right. You got it right. I took it out, so it probably needs a cleaning. Yeah. And, um... So my dad sends me a link, like, months ago, of something, yeah. which is basically exactly this size right here. Right here. And it's got a screen right here. Yeah, yeah, and you're so glad. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, digital back, basically. It's a digital back. It's a digital back. Yeah. And you can attach it to the, to the body. Yeah, yeah, 40 MP, whatever, something like that. Whatever, yeah, yeah, great yeah. depth. Man. Well, it's about, not about the numbers I anymore. I think those, the difference is that those are CCD. They're not CMOS, just like the face ones and the newer ones. Yeah. You know, I think that's the difference. Yeah. I They're like a bit so. older technology. So, I'm, I you think know. so, too. You're right. I think so, but they've worked on it as far as I understand. Yeah. Apparently, these are great. Or, or am I wrong? Is it a new product it's or is it completely old? fucking completely new? Fucking new? Okay, so it's, probably CMOS. New. so it's probably CMOS. Yeah, it yeah, probably yeah. must be CMOS. They must yeah. have upgraded it because, you know. Definitely. Yeah, and it's a weird special edition thing, so that's the whole camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So you just put a lens right on that. Ah, okay, 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 okay. I get it. On get that. It. And I it's think actually. You sent that to me, no? You sent that to me the other day. Could be, yeah, and then you. You can put it on this thing right here, exactly. and it becomes a digital bag because with your bag. mechanic. The rest of it is mechanical. Mechanical versus analog. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, which is absolutely brilliant. But seven thousand dollars? Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> seven thousand dollars for the something? That's problem with medium format. At the end of the day, you know, the, just the prices are astronomical. And honestly, like the quality, man. Sometimes, like the phase ones. Yeah. Man, those things they they like they they break down so often. Like honestly. Yeah. I don't fair. know why. I think Hasselblads <laughs> are much more durable than they are. Yeah. But even the Hasselblads, they they're so fragile as well. Like. They're fragile in the sense that the, imagine they're like like a Shelby. Yeah. Where it is old. If you take exactly. keep taking good care of it, it'll keep going but these forever. Are new. The phase one cameras are new, man. Yeah, that's like, true. And we have that's a lot of issues yeah. with them. A lot of the, like, the shutters. Yeah. All at the same oh, time. Fuck. All the clients that we sold to, they came at like a week apart, two weeks apart. Dude, my shutter's fucked. And oh, shutter man. would like just you know the leaves would just get intertwined and just oh, get fucked, shit. you know. And then you gotta uh, get that fixed. And you gotta get that fixed, you know, yeah. Because you're the well, it's fine because then obviously phase one they covered yeah. it. And we're just the middleman, you know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It to us. exactly. They come to us and we send it all the way to you. Can give them a replacement camera in the meantime if they had to. You know? Yeah. Like, so we had a lot of stuff coming in and out, you know. So it was a good a good chance to experience a lot of different backs, a lot of different bodies. Yeah. You know, so it was uh, fun learning that learning how to use that camera. And which lenses were you preferring mostly uh, with the phase one? I know when I started really shooting with the phase one, I started doing that series at the garage, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. The just the portraits. Yeah. 
I like to call them portraits. So they are like portraits. They're just cars with the blue and That's all that. That's why I like them. Yeah, I remember them. I remember you so show I them all. So I took that opportunity yeah. to learn the camera and shoot, because the only way to learn is to start shooting, you yeah. know? Like, you can't personally, like, reading and all that stuff. Yeah, you get information from reading, but it doesn't, like, stick, you know? Like, yeah. I'm the kind of person that likes to uh, be handy, be out there just using stuff from my hands, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And That's the way, only way to learn. That's how I learned yeah. the Hasselblad, dude. Yeah, I exactly. learned the hassle because I had to sh- just use it. Start, just use it, exactly. Just use you start it. Start using it, it starts. You, yeah. You start you shooting, start developing. It. I'm still learning it, dude. It feels like a challenge every single time I pull it out. Yeah. <laughs> so that the the thing with these old ones are they're so mechanical, just like that old like an old Shelby yeah. or whatever. You can replace almost any part with another part. Exactly. You know, yeah. you can have five different backs. You can I can t- remove this hoodie. And exactly. put on the fucking yeah, no. but those are yeah. so confusing, man. Because it's like mirrored. Yeah, yeah, you never, you look the other way. Why. Yeah, it's it like hurts that. the brain. Number one, number two. Yeah. For someone who's got eyes are really shitty like me, to get the focus right is not as easy. Yeah. With this one, my eyes right up to the plate. Yeah, exactly. You can change the plate too. I'm going to consider changing the plate. It looks so dirty at like when I'm at like above eight, f eight. Okay, yeah. It just gets darker and darker, and just too much. There's just textures, just fucking nuts, yeah, yeah, yeah. man, on the glass. To really see yeah, what's happening. you can get happening. a clear one or you can get one with the grid or something or like that. Yeah. Get all kinds of plates. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I don't know, man. Um, I was never a gearhead. I have... I'm like... Just like... Like... I know that you like details. Yeah. Like details with cars, for example. Yeah. You know, you're into all the... Like, you know what a fucking piston is. So yeah. For me... It, I'll have to like what the fuck does a piston do exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever and then all the it's details interest, like, yeah exactly it's an interest based but the interest is develops and turns you into a type of a gearhead yeah right? of course yeah of course. and you're definitely a gearhead because you're, you're curious about it I, in, yeah. my, in my point of view it's because you're curious about knowing everything about it yeah. you know whatever it is you're into whatever you're interested in yeah, yeah. The tools of the trade or something you're passionate about you know fair yeah, yeah, I guess you it's, do end up really getting either, into it. In my opinion, it's a good way to do it. You go full on, you know, this is where you discover every aspect of it, every facet of it to whatever it is yeah. you're getting into, which is the most fun, I think, honestly, thing to do. You know, especially if it's something that's fun, you know, like a hobby or whatever. Yeah, yeah, give, like, drive, dive in, basically. Dive in, yeah, yeah, yeah why yeah, not? Because in. it's, uh, most, of the world, most of these hobbies and most of these little yeah. worlds are all so immersive and, like, there's yeah. so much to discover and that, yeah. and that's whatever thing, photography, cars, uh, yeah. Or football, anything, you know. Yeah. You got to reserve that energy and space, though. So you got to choose wisely what you dive exactly. into, right? Exactly. Because if you're diving into one thing, you're sacrificing another thing. Of course, because it, yeah. it's, uh, sometimes it takes a lot of time to dive into something. It's, yeah. it's years and years of relationship, you know, kind of yeah. thing. What was the, fir- it, what was the first thing you remember really diving into? Like, if, right. you, if you just go nuts and go far back. Man, cars. Cars? Yeah, yeah. Was what was the first little dinky that you got? Cars yeah. and, uh, and music was... Cars and music, in that sense, those two, and yeah. I can remember the f- the part, the time of when the moment where I realized, holy shit, this, this stuff is amazing. Yeah, you know, music is amazing. I shouldn't like, yeah, yeah, just yeah. keep it aside as just this thing, you know, where it's used to celebrate or it's used to. You just hear it at a pub or a bar, yeah, you know, yeah, or it's yeah. just in the background. Yeah. Oh, I realized that this is something worth d- diving into. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So that time was that was Nirvana, of course, man, Nirvana. Yeah, and Cars was even before that because I was a bit younger, you know, with the kid with toys as a, yeah, as a yeah, kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then suddenly, I think that's all boys. Yeah, all boys. Pretty but then it kind of stuck. Like when I got into it, when I was started being a teenager, and I started just yeah. kind of getting into it and learning, learning all the different car brands or whatever and all this stuff. And just, yeah, and it was interesting to me. It just kind of stuck, and it just went from there. You know, like. Um, Damn. So and then that was the first thing, yeah, pretty much that like, was uh, that I decided to dive into. When was the first time you drove then? Like first time I drove. If you really love cars and you really dive yeah, into yeah, cars, yeah. you would eventually want to. I drive. I started driving when I was like sixteen. Sixteen. You know. Yeah. yeah. In Middlef. Yeah. My mom took me in her CRV. Like, yeah. First time ever, ever that I drove. I remember it was in Dera actually when we were living in yeah. Dera, and uh, we were downstairs chilling me and my me and my buddy and we were, and two guys, two brothers that were living like a floor above us. Yeah. We were all the way downstairs in the parking, and then uh, for somehow we had to re- I had the keys to the CRV. Yeah. Or mom was at home or something like that, so I had the keys to the mm-hmm. car. And they all obviously peer, peer, not peer pressure. They did peer pressure me to let's go for it, let's go for it. Yeah. And the dude's a bigger dude. He had a license. Driver, he's like, I'll drive it. So we just drove around the block, yeah. and then I swapped off seats and I drove around the block as well. And then that's it. Yeah. Literally, it was like this tiny inside, like yeah. backside, like all the buildings. It was so small. Was it? Yeah. And I came back and parked. It was the first time. I came. Were you able to connect that childhood joy of cars and all the 
Because yeah. you start to the fact when you got into the car for the first exactly, time, yeah. you were you able to connect that, or you, did you keep that separate, or you connect like it from the same, being a, yeah, the same passion basically. It was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it's, it was started it started to materialize, you know, yeah, like yeah. all the stuff that I thought what was driving would be alike, you know, like. For me, dude, cars were like girls. I just love looking at them, dude. Oh yeah. my god! Dude, like I even had posters and shit, man. Yeah, I love car posters, man. Yeah, man. Uh, like, especially those basic. classic ones. Yeah, yeah dude, it was just like, it's just in a studio, a fucking Ferrari. Exactly, exactly. A Ferrari yeah. Testarossa just in a studio. Yeah, gray background. Exactly. Like, fucking a red. They're awesome, man. Those posters, those. man. I used to have so many of them. Yeah. I used to have like maybe like close to twenty of them. They're like super cool. And yeah. I remember when we moved, my mom rolled them up. Yeah, and lost them, man. And I got oh, so, okay. and I kind of forgot about them for like yeah a long time. But then uh, when I asked her, she's like, "I'm like, where is it?" I was like, "Oh, yeah." But it's a shame, really. It's a shame that they got lost. Yeah, really we cool we all ended like, up losing a lot of these things that now feel more valuable actually more because valuable. a vintage is more valuable now. It is yeah. more in style. Yeah, if you have yeah. a, a poster from like 1989 right. hanging on your wall, yeah, it's fucking but, sweet. It's fucking cool. Of course, yeah. it is. You can always find reproductions and stuff. Yeah, know, obviously, you can, you can. obviously, and it's not like cars are like oh, car posters yeah. are a work of art. But now it's kind of the, the thing is because those posters were so iconic to the era. You know, yeah, like true. even the the paper that they yep, use, agreed. the colors, the the way it's yeah. printed, the size was uniform and all that. Yeah. Uh, nowadays, people I feel like they get more something more artistic, more like a print from from photographer or things like that. Those are kind of mass produced. The other ones. Yeah. I think. Have you done any of those? Made a print for some all these fucking cars you've shot? I've shot. I've, I've done. Sorry, I've done yeah. a lot of prints. Yeah, I've yeah. done a few prints. I did a few. Yeah. Um, I used to do them as a thanks to the garage, you know, because yeah. like, they used to let me shoot there a lot. That's very to, smart. And they used to give me yeah. like access all areas, you know. Yeah, like yeah. I came in like. I kind of I kind of pestered them like in yeah. a sense, you know, I just kept coming, kept coming, kept shooting. Yeah. I kept giving them by. Uh, digitally the images yeah. you know, whenever I could I yeah. tagged them and all that and all that and like an extra bonus I'd like every once in a while when like uh, I remember because one day I was shuffling through my stuff yeah. and I found paper from uni like that was still sitting wrapped up so yeah. good I was like dude let's fucking use it so I yeah. took a printer from uh, the studio and I had just gotten some new printers and I was yeah. like let me just drive them in case I need to use them in a shoot or whatever so I can figure them out be able yeah. to troubleshoot them or whatever you know Again, idea. just be hands on with them, you know, use them so you can yeah, see how they work. That's how you know. Yeah. You know, like, even if someone explains to you, hey, you gotta do this, no, you gotta sit there, you gotta do it. You better know? do it. Yeah, yeah. So I printed a few. The first time I printed, they came out right. The second time, they came out way too dark. I don't think I calibrated them well. I think the paper okay. was too was Absorbent, too thick. Too thick. So the ink was really dark, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't calibrate it well, even though we sat there, me and Nicolo, for like a good 20 minutes getting the right software and yeah. updating the drivers and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, it still came out really dark, but I came to that, I was like, dude, this. This is what they are. <laughs> Do you yeah. want them or not? They actually they have them. A few of them hung in the. They open the coffee shop right next to it. Like it's like a cycle okay. coffee shop. Yeah, yeah. What's it called? It's like Cycle Hub. You know, cycle. you know Cycle Hub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, same idea. Yeah, it's, yeah. But it's called Airworks. Airworks cycles. Airworks. See, the the entire right. thing's called Airworks. Okay. And so they have that shop there, and they have them hanging over there. Yeah. And they have the garage right behind it. Basically. The other, the other, bike shop coffee shop that I went yeah. to was that Moto it's called Moto yeah by the way if you go there right now right now uh, you can have a portrait done by Walid Shah yeah yeah, yeah I saw <laughs> yeah, so I was like do I really want to rock your ugly I was like hell no <laughs> it's for a certain type of people who will get some kind of satisfaction and release from that yeah you know it's uh, I won't get anything out of it I prefer self-portraits, to be honest. I really enjoy self-portraits. I think okay. they are they are the most uh, challenging thing for me to yeah, do. Yeah, dude. I could that I can it. constantly do. I could never do like, it, man. I never have an excuse not to take yeah. a self-portrait, you know? Fair enough. No, I could never do it. I did it once because I wanted to shoot the, my tattoo. Yeah. I, got re- I got it. A friend of mine shot it, but I wanted to shoot it myself. Yeah. And I tried it and I did it and it was just like, no, fuck this. <laughs> so I, can't do it. I found it so awkward. I found yeah. it really... Uh, it is tough to look at yourself. To look at yourself, man. Yeah, like, man. I think I hadn't looked at myself yeah. in a long time, you know? Like, Maybe. Uh, so, and it's so intimate, so just you, you know? Like, yeah. And I was in the studio, so it was like really big. Yeah. And it was just empty. It was just me and like a bit of music. Yeah. It just felt weird, you know? <laughs> it like, feels weird. I um, know, man. I know. But I, I got to push through and I did it. They came out okay, the pictures. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember where I put them. That's another thing that you really dove into, man. Tattoos. Yeah. Uh, quite a bit. I mean, yeah. you're, you're covered in them. Yeah, dude. Love tattoos, you know? man. I love, yeah. tattoos. I love tattoos, too. <laughs> but for me, it was it was like a, it's 
like it's still obviously a definite possibility and i'm always looking man I'm always looking because i'm like it'll be just one one thing that clicks yeah and i go to shit on a tattoo sh- stores when i'm traveling yeah yeah walk man. in everywhere look at everybody's art man, talk the, to them these even these guys are honestly you know? it's such a it's such a yeah. unique craft man tattooing i've, I've yeah. realized uh and the community is like none I've ever encountered. Honestly, yeah. like they're really they have very strange interests. They're very s- and their own in, like their own, their own thing. And they're really things. I feel like the, well, the guys at least the ones that I met in Nepal when I went to the convention in Nepal were most of my tattoos are done in that convention. Yeah, yeah. Um, I found it interesting. There was obviously it was a lot of like hippie like people that were there. Um, uh, a lot of people, you know, the dreads, tattooers, all these people from the dreads and all that kind of stuff. It was a lot yeah. of black work people, you know, those kind of people. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you can, you can picture what, what kind of people I'm talking about. Actually can. Actually can, because um, I've seen your photos. A lot, yeah. Some of them from your trip to Nepal, at least. Yeah. So that give me an idea of the type of people. And I've met a lot of, like, random tattoo artists or people who are really yeah. into tattoo. So you end up gathering a sense of... Um, I don't get a sense of community. I get a sense of individuality that is connecting people with a similar interest for sure. Yeah. And a love, really. A, a love, love of it. These guys are so dedicated. It, I've never it's seen people yeah. like, and they're, they're not yeah. tattooing, they're drawing. If they're not drawing, they're, they're pr- doing prints. If they're not yeah. doing prints, they're proper artists, you know? Yeah, and yeah, we're, yeah. And we have several mediums, you know, obviously because yeah. the media now is making it easier to kind of yeah. um, have several mediums uh, yeah. put out, you know, like... Have you ever tried uh, your hand at drawing or any other artistic uh, exploration besides photography? Um, I used to draw cars as a kid, of course. Of course, man. Of course. <laughs> even as a kid, like later, even until like, I was still in like late high school, you know, like yeah. almost uh, 18, 19. I used to draw cars, everybody were basic. I still have them the drawings at home. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. yeah, I keep them. Like, cool. and it was this imaginary company that me and my brother came up with. Like he was the dude doing all the finance or whatever, and I was a yeah. designer in that sense. <laughs> He was going on a whole trip, but he did like it was it was awesome. He did a full on like yeah. report almost. You know, oh god, like, that's so good. Of everything, what, what the what basically what that company offered in terms of cars, what the different engines, and yeah, the yeah, yeah. prospected uh, numbers of production. Things that he'd say, I was really I was like, whoa, what the hell? No wonder he came out to be like such a smart guy. Honestly, what does like, he do? He's uh, he trades. He trades oh, sugar. Man, he's a trader. Yeah, he trades sugar. Sugar. <laughs> he used to, yeah. You should invest with him, dude. Where does he trade? Um, he trades with the company. With the company. Yeah, yeah, he works with the company, and he's w- one of their guys. Yeah. I think he's moved up, obviously, in the, the, the ranks. I'm not sure exactly yeah, what he's done. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, he's very good at what he does. Right? That's Clearly, awesome. You know? That's awesome. So, yeah, so I used to draw for that company that yeah, he had imaginarily cool. created. Yeah, 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 he was, at the time, he was, like, 20, maybe, or something. All right. Or 22, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That must have been, like, in, in a way, a wonderful exercise for him. Hey, man, obviously, yeah, the, yeah. obviously, you guys bond. That's one yeah, awesome yeah, thing. Yeah. How old were you? I was, uh, if he was like 20, 22, I was must have been like 16, 14. Yeah, yeah, cool. Well, 16, 18, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Even maybe a bit younger, actually. Yeah. yeah. Did you end up drawing in school, in university? Drawing in school? In yeah. No, no, no. No? At that point, I stopped after high school. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I decided, I, I at, that point, at that point, I started, I started uh, um, realizing that the camera feels comfortable here, you know? Yeah, like, no, yeah. I'm not, I'm not standing there. Honestly, I wanted to like, I always wanted to pick up cameras and like, yeah, yeah. have it there. When did that start? When was your first camera? My first camera was, uh, my mom gave me my first camera, it was like a small, a small Kodak. It's like a okay. two megapixel okay. uh, f- a digital camera. Two megapixel, um, yeah. The actual one, I think I don't still have it, yeah. but another one that she got me later, just okay. the same one, Yeah. I still have that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's still cool. Man, I've lost all my cameras. Yeah, now I have most of them. I, I, most of I them. just don't know where the fuck they are, dude. Yeah, they just... My first one. I don't have that many, so. Yeah, I had, dude. I've been getting cameras since as long as I can remember. I've been holding a fucking camera. They were like these little thin, long ones. Yeah. You yeah. put, put the roll in, and uh, and I had two like, well, the one I had was was like a Ninja Turtle theme. Okay. Yeah. Right? yeah. And when you take a photo, there'd be a frame of the photo with the Ninja Turtles around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's hilarious. So that was awesome. <laughs> and then I got an Indiana Jones camera. Same thing. And that would just put the logo at the bottom. Okay, that's fair all. enough. That's all. And I think you had an option to remove it even, but it was fucking plastic as hell, dude. Yeah, dude. Have you ever had like a like a Diana or a Holga? Like these. The Holga, uh, yeah. Holga is yeah, pretty yeah. plastic. Holga still feels like a sturdy plastic. This wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> but I shot with it a bunch, man, and then nice. it just vanished. And like I'm talking about when I was like, you know, six years old, seven yeah, years old. Yeah. You know. It seems they get thrown out by the family. Yeah, it's man. It's always like, what the so. fuck is this shit broken? Something yeah, broken. Yeah. And maybe it broke. I don't remember, yeah. dude. But 
I remember like taking pictures even then, and I was always taking pictures of yeah. people. Nice, people, nice, yeah. Or eventually, I started to take my dad's DSLR out and photograph fucking flowers and okay, nice. textures and like looking for any kind of animal, and I ended up finding a pretty awesome animal. I found like a like an iguana, like a wild iguana in. And, and where where were you at in time? the garden in my in my home in Karachi? In your Karachi, okay. Yeah, dude, it was fucking gorgeous iguana, and and I, something just overtook me. I ran inside the house because I was like, yeah. just came from school or something, and then someone said, "Hey, there's an iguana in the garden." I look at it, and I just run up inside the house, go th- open my dad's cupboard, rummage yeah. through his gear, find a camera. Look at like there's like a roll inside this camera. Yeah, you know I have no idea what is what it is. Most likely color because my dad pretty much always shot in color. Yeah, probably like a Fuji. I had no clue. I had like eight pictures left in it, and I just found a long lens, put it on that camera, and I just took a bunch of photos. And then I was like, freaking, I couldn't get out of my head. I was like, oh, photography is not just taking pictures on vacation and just. Of the sky and shit, you can no, take pictures of anything, s- anything and real subjects. Yeah, and I'll yeah, tell you, yeah. it wasn't the photo that came out that was awesome, which it was, by the way, for like a young guy to a young kid to take a photo. Of. It was a good photo. That wasn't what hooked me. It was me lying there on the grass, looking through yeah, that the lens, uh, the lens with the, with an SLR. It was just an yeah. SLR, so I could see you know with the mirror, and I was just like, and every time I would click, I was like, I gotcha. I yeah, gotcha. Yeah. The focus is on yeah, yeah, manual nice, and everything. Nice. Yeah, yeah, satisfaction. It is. It is. It is. Yeah. And then I was always taking pictures of something or the other. Eventually, yeah. I started doing more video. My dad got me like this really uh, awesome Canon video camera. We put like you would put these little tapes in there, the TV tapes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I fucking love that shit, man. And I used to like make. Yeah, it's funny. Video. I also had my my parents also got a video camera for themselves, and I yeah. kind of started using it for a while. But I didn't. Yeah. I didn't click with me. I just was doing stupid shit. Like I prefer the stills. I prefer like. Yeah. I would take pic- the camera had like that was that was my first digital camera ever. Okay. Because it had like an option where you could put you like an stills. SD card. Yeah. I already had an SD card, and I don't yeah. remember, but uh, yeah, but you could take these digital stills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were like horrifying quality. <laughs> but I took so many photos of like, and like, and I kept that camera with me for like, like I used it for like seven, eight years. Wow. I would I moved to Dubai with it. No, nice. I still had it with me when I came to Dubai. So just, like, well, what happened to it now? I still have it somewhere oh, around. Enough, somewhere around. Um, it wasn't doing well. I once had to get it like super fixed. I like had to give it to somebody who took it. My mom was going to Caracas, I think, to Venezuela, and she took it with her. She got it fixed there. And uh, brought it awesome. back, and then it was just always a bit dinky after that. I still have all the DV tapes I shot. I saw so yeah. many. I still have them just right here, of the most random shit, man. Yeah, of like course. Random shit. I think these kind very of stuff, few, very yeah. few actual narratives. It was just moving photos. Is how I was yeah, looking yeah. at it. You know, awesome. pretty much. That's I even awesome. tried like I even taken stills out of them once in a while and like made some artwork out of them. Only okay. once. Only once or twice actually, but. Dresses the dumbest shit of me and my friends as yeah, young yeah. people <laughs> just being dumbasses, <laughs> you know. And yeah, these kind of videos you you're gonna watch them when you're like sixty seven. Exactly, you laugh your ass off. Exactly. <laughs> I even think about like you don't know, get it over with. Just digitize them now because I'm not gonna shoot more DVs, <laughs> you know. Yeah. To digitize them now and uh, yeah, yeah, as a backup. Some of them are. Some of them were at least. And God knows I'll find a lot of embarrassing shit. Man. Yeah. A lot of weird shit. <laughs> I've looked at some yeah. of all the photos, the, yeah. the, the 6x4s, you know, these two yeah. like, oh, man. Yeah. It's super embarrassing. Yeah. I found, um, I also started my first foray into any kind of digital work because I was still shooting, the, f- the photos I was shooting were filmed, right? So I, there was no digital aspect to them. Yeah. Uh, you got tissues right there. That's fine. That's fine. It's fine. It's just one. Yeah. And, um, and, uh, but those videos I was making with the DV, I had to do something with those. So I started transferring them onto my really shitty ass home computer. And then I got like a really terrible editing Vega something, something video editor. And I started editing videos. And bro, those videos are so embarrassing to admit that I edited those. Yeah. They have like no shame. You know, like you say, like you just got to put your hands in it. I put my hands in every filter I could find, every yeah. <laughs> like random, even CGI that I didn't shoot, I would just download yeah, yeah, it yeah. and just put it in like a video and I make music videos by the way. They're yeah, all music yeah, videos yeah. of songs I love, That's pretty awesome. much. Pretty much every band I would be into at the time, 
I would have like a, at least one music video and all and you would act in it or like it I would people? be in it a lot of the time but it would mostly yeah. be my friends and stuff and like sure. they would be doing things that were visually interesting to me yeah, yeah, yeah sometimes it was not we were just hanging out in a room or in a bathroom for a little yeah. while and I'd just be shooting like like fans and yeah. smoke with some light coming yeah. out <laughs> you know like dumb and then just edit them into a music video and I was shooting even then I was always like dude girl obsessed girl obsessed wanted to shoot women already yeah and I didn't have I didn't have a camera right so I was like so I can't take pictures I'm gonna take videos of girls yeah you know like take video like portraits of sorts yeah. I didn't know that's what they, I was doing at the point at that time that's exactly what I was doing and um so it's funny it's, it's interesting to hear someone like say it's like because I, I find myself a lot saying that about cars, you know? Like, yeah. And when I meet other photographers, I don't uh, I don't hear them say that often, that it's something that they started with when they were really young, yeah. you know? They were interested just just, they want to shoot this, I want to shoot this, yeah. you know? Like, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's it continues being the same thing all the way throughout until now, you know? Like, Seriously. you still want to shoot that thing, you know? Exactly. It's kind of hilarious um, that you, I, you know... And a lot of photographers that I meet, they don't seem to... I don't seem to find that that in them you know like that passion that there's specific mm. thing that they absolutely adore shooting that they've yeah. again dove into you yeah. know and done that I also um, think photography in general has this whole other aspect that is the general aspect when people think you're a photographer they don't imagine cars and they don't imagine fashion portraiture yeah. and artsy what parts do you think of they things imagine? they imagine immediately like blue sky gorgeous green field trees Oh, yeah, or yeah, they'll yeah. be like, oh, like buildings, water okay, yeah, flowing, enough, beach, enough. beach photos. Yeah. They start to think of these landscapes, these things that they can consume easily. Exactly. You know, and then when they hear the word professional photographer, then they're like, what do professionals do? And then they'll start thinking of No, I think you know, we're past things. that time. I think we're past that time. I think now people are obviously are more familiar with the <laughs> profession. The profession. You know, back then it was a bit different because it was, it was very different. You know, the media was just yeah. starting to get much more popular much more worldwide yeah I think now yeah before people weren't consuming images the way they are now, the way they are now sure. you know, even exactly. just 20 years ago yeah in the year 2000 yeah. it wasn't Man, you photography really is 100 years old you know yeah. like it's yeah. uh, like maybe 110 years old 120 yeah. um, so it's like it's still super new to everybody you know so it's I'm glad in the art we, world. as the people who provide it, I got we we now have a pretty much firm position again. So yeah, professional yeah. photographer doesn't sound strange anymore. You know? Yeah, it doesn't. The profession sound doesn't sound strange anymore. You know. Yeah, like, it I doesn't sound that, like a like what? What do you mean? Because my parents, you know, were no to them. It's not they, again. It's not like a profession. You know. Like, yeah. Not the. It's not that they were completely against it, but just the idea of it was still kind of like set in the time where it's not yeah. a real job. You know. Yeah, like, yeah. you can do that. You're a doctor. Side. You do a whatever. You do yeah. whatever. I know it sounds very generic and very. You know, a lot of people say that about their parents, but it's true. <laughs> it is true. Yeah, because it's <laughs> this not. Is, it is how they thought. You know, yeah, especially like, if you're studying it as, as a young person. To do it, studying yeah, to do it. To they're do like, it, yeah, you can study something else and do that. Yeah. You know, yeah, you exactly. Still, you know, you can still study something it's, else. This is like a hobby. They always exactly. It's like, no, dude, this is what I want to do. This is my career. This is what I like to do. They could have, they couldn't get it. Not that they couldn't get it. No, I mean, my mom's very supportive. My dad yeah. was also very supportive. And, uh, like, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Uh, but they would have preferred something more like advertising, you I'm know, sure which, is what, which is I was enrolled at, at start with an AUD. Yeah. yeah, yeah advertising. Yeah. You remember okay. that half, half, whatever the hell it was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One of the programs. Half graphic design, had. half something else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A weird program. And yeah. Um, I'm glad you changed, dude. And then Roberto, man, Roberto catches <laughs> he got, me, man. He, he got me, man. He got us both. He's like, I heard you want to do photography. I was because like, oh, I kind of said it to someone, mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah. or I asked at the at the main desk, you know, where you register. Yeah. Registrar. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and he puts me down. He put the papers all there, ready. He's like, all right, I'll have to do this sign here, and, I'm, <laughs> and I sign here, and he's like, done. Flip. Yeah. Now you're a photography major. Welcome. I was like, okay, sure. And my home. <laughs> I, told, I told mom and dad, and. Yeah. Uh, uh, dad got a bit annoyed. He's like, "What? Why did you tell me earlier you're gonna make this decision?" Whatever. I was like, "Dude, it just kind of happened, man." <laughs> so that's the only really kind of like trouble he gave me. He's like, "Why, why don't you consult me first? Yeah. You know, like, like it was, there wasn't a, there wasn't a conversation. There wasn't a conversation or anything. You know, so I think yeah. you know, so it wasn't as aggravated as I, I made it sound earlier. You know. <laughs> yeah, fair. So he said, he said that and I was like, "Okay, fine. Well, I was done. I was, I was done. You know." My mom was like, "Oh, dude, dude, why are you like being so rough with him? Let him do what he wants." You know. Yeah. So <laughs> um, that's good. Yeah, so it's good. So I ended up doing it, and I did it. You know, like yeah. Fair. Fair. Hmm? He wants to hang out with the new man. He wants to do his own thing. Good boy. Hmm? 
If you weren't a photographer, Sammy, what would you be doing? I would probably be doing something with cars. <laughs> Fair. I know I keep saying that, but like... No, I yeah, get yeah. it, dude. I, I wouldn't mind, it. like, I wouldn't mind selling cars. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't mind being a... Actually, one profession that I kind of thought of really changing into, which would be an easy transition, I think, would have been journalist. Or yeah. more of journalist. Yeah. Um, not that I'm bemeaning uh, writing and things like that, you know, but I yeah. feel like um, with photography, there's also a certain amount of reportage that you do, you know, like especially uh, when shooting events. Yeah. A lot of times I treat it as a reportage, you know, it's not like to define the word reportage, it's like it's not just taking pictures for the sake of taking pictures. You're trying to tell a story behind it, you're trying to show the atmosphere of the of the entire venue uh, venue and event that's happening you know you're not just documenting for sake of documenting you're just taking pictures you know? yeah yeah i think that's where the, the, the kind of difference is between some press photographers and other like event uh, events photographers, event photographers you know like yeah. press photographers i feel like again not not to be mean their, yeah, yeah of course of their course. profession it's, and what they yeah. do a lot of them they come just to record what's yeah. happening you know that's, there's that's, no creativity that's the purpose yeah it's the purpose they want yeah, they yeah. Need to get a clean shot of the sheikh doing his speech yeah. you know like yeah um Whereas a lot of times for me, when I shoot events, like I have to cover these things, it has to be more of a storytelling based point of view where, yeah, because um, I feel like that's also where people are kind of going with the way they promote their brands, with yeah. the way they show themselves online on, yeah. the, on whatever media it is, you know, social yeah. media, all that. Uh, a lot of people tend to go through this more storytelling, more like the narrative structure has become so important, basically. And it, yeah, it becomes so, yeah. uh, and it becomes engaging, obviously, to the people, yeah. you know, so yeah. Um, I think that's what I enjoy very much about doing an event photography. That's why I'm still in it. That's why I still like doing it. I don't mind. Yeah. I meet a lot of guys I work with on the job, and they're just like, "Oh, you still like doing this stuff?" He's like, and they're so over it. You know, <laughs> yeah, they're so yeah. over it. I'm one of them that's they're over it. They're doing it just to get the money. Yeah. You know, and like they yeah. do it like I don't gonna say half-ass, but like they just do it. You know, they're like, they get they're yeah. very good at what they do. Yeah. You know, but they're just so over it. You know, I'd rather take joy in it while I'm doing it. Sometimes I, I do some events, you know, like anything, you know, where you're just going to like, so boring, you know. Yeah, I mean? you find your entertainment somehow. Together. Exactly. And for but me, it's like, oh, I'm going to just stare at this, this important people here and yeah, make yeah. sure that catch interesting things that they're doing. And I really like, try to focus, you know, what else can you do? In a, it was in the conference room in an office. Oh, man, I've done Dude, those, how, man. how, like, awkward is that? You know? I know, like, I've been a photographer walking around. Yeah. And I didn't even have, most of my life, I've never had a long lens. So the longest lens I would have would be 100 mm. So no, I still have to be close to, to them, yeah, dude. And I would do it. I would do the conferences with my prime I'd lens. I'd say invest yeah. in 7200. I did. Even, I did it like a year yeah. ago, finally. I got the F4. That's fine. Doesn't matter. Doesn't okay. matter. Yeah, just pop fine. up the ISO. Exactly. That's exactly that what I got it for, yeah. man. So I don't have to walk, keep walking closer. And the closer the other ones. Uh, yeah. That's, that was actually the main reason why I got yeah. the F4. That was the real sell point for me. The, the fact that it was lighter. Otherwise, dude, um, I did. I rented the 2.0 a few times. Not much of a difference image-wise, yeah. But the weight really was easy. was yeah. killing it's me. It's like man. half the. Like, half the <laughs> I kept putting it down, and I had a second camera with the with the hundred. I would just take the hundred, you know, because it was just same thing, dude. It was like a big hall, with like hundred and ten people just yeah. sitting on chairs facing one way. Yeah. And there's a screen <laughs> and a stage. Those people are just standing there and talking. So exactly. what are you gonna do? You're gonna shoot the people sitting there and the people on the stage. That's the only way you can get the whole story. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Do a few wide yeah. angles, you're done. Of course. You've got the whole space. Exactly. You know? So, for me, I guess the way everybody's into storytelling and narrative and stuff, I was, uh, I guess I watched too many David Lynch movies when I was young. Okay. <laughs> so I like a bit of surrealism. So, when it comes to other kinds of photography, which will really benefit from narrative, styles like fashion works great yeah, as yeah. a narrative. Of course. It's brilliant. Of course. I hate it. As a narrative, I'm like, what, okay. what are you telling me? Do I ask for a story? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't ask for a story. I want, <laughs> I want beauty now. Exactly. First shot. Exactly. Give me everything looking amazing or interesting or. Yeah. So I, that's why I like one-off photographs. Like, there's no series or anything. It's just one photo. That's just brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you, know? you. I get you. And even, even they have series here and there. Like, if you go to the really high-end fashion photographers, like this is guy called Paolo Roversi. His work is okay. just so textured and layered and colored. And Let me throw his name down. Yeah, Paolo Roversi. This is stunning. I just love the way he shoots girls. Paolo. Roversi. Very trippy, man. Like, just the colors are just... Like, what are you doing, man? How did you do this? There's a how always there. And dude, some of these guys, they're surrounded by such amazing artists. You know, like, brilliant stylists and wonderful models. Yeah, and yeah. 
like makeup artists and hairstylists to like do the craziest stuff the craziest degree yeah, people really who are you. who've dove in early they know everything they know how to execute they're like they're like artisans of the highest degree exactly and when and you, you have that around oh my high god end fashion yeah, yeah. I keep running into average makeup artists, bro. Yeah, I shouldn't exactly. say that. <laughs> it's gonna be exactly. recorded, but it's true. I've worked with way too many, and they're all right. Yeah. Bad has been a long time. Okay. Yeah, but I don't have much experience with them, honestly, because you I do end up shooting them. fashion. Yeah. Yeah. I do, but not as often as you do. Yeah, you fair. Know, I should. I, I, I attract it a, a lot. Um, so yeah, you're dominantly event like events. Yeah, dominantly event, events. Yeah. Sometimes portraits, portraits but portraits yeah. like corporate portraits. You know, yeah, so yeah. there's no real makeup. Those, involved, dude, so. those are really challenging, man. Those are challenging, man. So man okay. I, one series that honestly taught me a lot, yeah. and I really enjoyed shooting it. It was for these heads of offices, uh, and uh, what was it called? The, co- the company Tawazun. Okay. And Abu Dhabi. Yeah. And they were doing like a celebratory event, 20 years or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anniversary. Yeah. And they were taking portraits of all the dudes. So I shot that. Yeah. And it was one on one, and it's one on one. Yeah. <laughs> the guy would come, guide him into this, to this office space that I had like reserved yeah. for me. I had my setup and everything. Yeah. The guys would guide them in, put them in there, and they leave. And it was just me and this dude. And, like, yeah. and these are like these super high ranked people. And you know, they weren't intimidating or anything, but. These guys, you know, they don't, they don't take, they don't know how to take a picture, you know. No, like, they don't. So you gotta. <laughs> so it's interesting, like engaging them. Whatever. Some guys obviously a bit more, a bit more outgoing, a bit more easygoing. Some, some a bit more stiff, you know. Like, yeah. But that one, like, and the lighting and getting it right and everything, like, again, teaches you discipline to do it and yeah. to get it right and yeah. and to be consistent also, like. That's really and, important in this and opposite to what you were saying in terms of the one uh, one shot yeah, photo, one you shot know, photo. like yeah, yeah. doing a series like that is like also like yeah, yeah. they look need to look the same, you yeah. know, as similar as. Possibly. And it was interesting because I had uh, the references that I was using in terms of like, this consistency was when I assisted once this photographer who was the Crown Prince photographer basically in the Crown Prince Court, sorry, yeah. in Abu Dhabi. Yeah, yeah. So he's one of those, her, they're like uh, top, uh, like not uh, senior photographers, you know, in that sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Canadian dude, <laughs> bottom man, ginger head, he's like yeah. so, hey, can you look at him, he looks a bit. Uh, he, he was always in a suit and everything, and this guy, I assisted him once, he was looking for assistant. Yeah. Dude, he was measuring the stuff. Oh, measuring this with the measuring tape. Hmm. Measure, like measuring distances of distance like... Distance of the lights and the setup. Exactly. After the setup, yeah, he, measures he measures everything, everything, everything. and what writes are down. Oh, wow. And I was like, when that, like yeah. in terms of... Because I was just starting to work at that point, just trying to get exposed to different kind of photographers and their methods. Yeah, and they, yeah. you know, so these, again, these guys, you know, to go back to the whole point of diving into something so yeah. like be so meticulous you know yeah. like yeah um i i find meticulousness in photography very attractive i find it uh find it beautiful i'm like that's that's like truly loving your craft yeah yeah you know when you really really and it's the same like, thing with music you know like yeah, a lot of these oh guys they God. dive into it and i and i've been i mean recently i fixed my fender right yeah and yeah, yeah. The amp, man, the amp is so cool yeah <laughs> dude, it's a marshall what is it it's a fender it's uh, fender amp, fender amp yeah. and it's got all kinds of effects in it like, dude yeah oh, man it. yeah that that's brilliant and i have to get pedals they're not like the best in terms of yeah. sound but dude like it just to me it's, i just want to play you know play yeah, it, yeah, you yeah. Know? that's brilliant and so i started yeah. also like seeing uh, looking up uh looking up yeah. tabs playing whatever yeah. and I, I mean i know how to play the guitar but it's obviously my fingers are, it's been ages i haven't done yeah. so i'm finding it a bit hard actually to, to kind of get back into it. why are my fingers yeah. just not so just feel so stiff you're yeah right. yeah um and also in terms of creativity you know like in terms of creating a tune out of nothing you know yeah. like um that's always so much fun that made me realize you know these guys that actually do this stuff create these crazy yeah. songs create all this stuff these guys are so like they've mastered they've mastered the entire thing yeah I do and they've controlled it the way they want to make it sound to you you know like seriously like they've got it's genuine control genuine control of the sound of, and, and I love that they, they can rep, re- replicate it immediately okay. as well and they can yeah. replicate it on stage and in different spaces exactly. I think that's one of the most challenging aspects of being a musician, in my opinion. Of course, you know? of course. And I, I just watched this video of Billy, Billy Corgan and talking about how him and his sound and his yeah. guitar and how he, the yeah. sound he wants from his guitar, you know? Like, yeah. And he was talking all this stuff, you know, gain and, and the distortion pedals and all those different stuff and different songs and how he how he did that sound, you know, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so interesting to know, again, this guy is like in the craft and khalas, he's yeah, like... Do, do like, change, they're changing like humbuckles and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. They go deep, man, they go deep. Some, a lot of them end up designing their own guitars yeah. from scratch. So many of these musicians yeah, yeah, exactly. have their own exactly. guitars. Exactly. Because they've, they've really, that's how deep you get into the craft. Imagine if we become such we, amazing we photographers, make we make our own cameras. Exactly, like how <laughs> yeah. crazy is that? That is crazy, that generally is. Um, we should try making our own we cameras. Should, like, we should make like 
like I think like cameras. To, to kind of like bring it all together, the stuff that we've been talking about, you know, at the end of the day, like if you're not going to do something, find one thing and do it 100%. Yeah. You know, I all think, the way through. I think it's a lot, people are missing a lot if, if they're not chasing that one thing and going in like, what was the expression? Uh, find something and let it kill you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Find, find something, something you love. Love and let it kill yeah, you. Yeah. And let it kill you. Yeah. Shit, man, you're right. I think it's the it's the it's one of the best ways to experience uh, stuff. You can experience best everything experience else. Life, everything dude. else, you yeah, know. Yeah, but yeah. I think everybody should have that one thing that's for them, and it's like yeah. a passion they should a follow passion. that they love dearly. That yeah. uh, I sometimes that meet drives people who don't them, have you know? that, dude. People, don't, of course, people don't yeah, have that. So I find it very strange. This it's girl, so weird. This is girl just, I used to like, and they're just and there. she she said to me, she was like. You're so lucky you know your passion. I was like, I have yeah. many passions in life, and I do. So yeah. many passions, you know? Of course. She's like, I don't have any passions. I'm like, yeah, you do. Everybody, they, Everybody it can't be. I don't think they realize it. They don't realize it. I'm like, and I asked her, I'm like, she's like, I guess I like traveling. I'm like, that's a passion you can dive so deep into. Yeah. Oh my exactly. God. You, you can, can make it happen. Yeah. And some people don't seem to realize. I think probably, I, I didn't realize it when I was younger, but. The fear of living maybe probably yeah, comes can, into part of it. You can, I mean, uh, don't get me wrong, you can't just say it so loosely, you can do it, because yeah. a lot of people are really in situations where they can't just get up and get it. Yeah, true, of course. People of course. Living in, like, I don't know, Afghanistan yeah, yeah. or yeah, yeah, of course. China or like weird yeah. places, they're just stuck, you know, like yeah, where yeah, they are, course. you know. That is sad. It's That's unfortunate the, that there's people yeah, like that, you know, around yeah. the world. And um, But we're lucky. We're lucky that so, we're, yeah. and, but I find it weird that people that, are, that have the same opportunities as us. Exactly. They yeah. don't seem to see it, that you can do yeah. it, man. That you can you know, have like, a passion, that you can have a... You can have a call it. Like, what's it, what would, that sometimes I would think about it. What's the difference between me and them? You know, why did I find it and I didn't? Yeah. You know, like, or, so many or why do I, like, again, appre like, appreciate, have a certain understanding and appreciation of what's yeah. going on around me. For sure. You know, like, I met this girl who was so, so into that, so aware of yeah. what's happening around her and so, like, madly in love with discovering it, you know, like, every yeah. experience possible. Yeah. And, uh, and the most, like, wide eyed, open, uh, can't believe that this is available to me to do, you know, yeah. like, yeah, I can't believe yeah. I'm doing this right now, you know, like, that kind of amazement, you know, to That's her. actually awesome, that's, yeah. the, that's one of the first impressions I had of her, you know, like, yeah. it was a bumble date, we went out and met her, like, oh, and yeah. she left, like, honestly, like, a, quite a impact on her, like, yeah. uh, um... You gonna give her a call? <laughs> no. Uh? <laughs> didn't work out, like, whatever. No, didn't fair. work out, just nothing happened. You know? Fair, fair. That, that's, that's... But look, I, man, I'd like to, I'd like to get in touch with her just to be like, dude, just be around me, you know? I don't want to be a boyfriend, girl. I just want to know you, like, yeah, as a yeah, person, yeah. you know? Yeah, like, you can do that, you can be friends. I, I'm sure I could definitely do that, you know? I like, can be friends. Yeah. It's always um, good to make, and especially friends that, like, what's that horrible saying that I really hate? You're the sum of the five people that are around you. you I've know? never heard that. <laughs> it's basically the, the five people that you surround yourself with. Yeah, yeah, you're them. You're them, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. And you become like them if you're not yeah, them yet. You know, so, Fair so you, if you put the right kind of people around exactly, you, you're going to be able to self-actualize in a much better way. Absolutely. In a much yeah. more open way. Yeah, and this, you she know? felt like this kind of person, like an enabler in that sense. To, yeah. <laughs> to get me to, uh, to add a certain thing or a certain uh, presence or a certain energy around me, you know. Yeah. And that, but honestly, like, I felt, I felt like I took a little piece of that and I was like, oh shit, yeah, dude, she's totally right, you know, yeah, yeah, I really yeah. did, I think at that point. It's good that you can keep that piece with yeah, you. Yeah, and she, yeah. and she came at a point where I was like really starting to realize, you know, in my life, like, um, what am I really going to do, you know, like, I knew obviously I'm going to do photography, it's a career, here's my career, you know, yeah, you yeah. Go. I, I figured it out, that's the career part, yeah. you know, something you, you, you used to make money out of, you get me, but yeah, at the downside, I was old enough to kind of understand but what do I really want to do, you know, like, you know, in terms of in this world and this universe, I'm now aware, like, I hope I'm like aware hundred percent, you know, like, yeah, I'm an adult in that age, you get me? Yeah. So you're pretty much aware of what's happening around you. You're aware of your decisions. You're aware of what you're doing. A lot of times when you're a kid, obviously a lot of stuff gets decided for you. You're just kind of following the boat, you know, kind of following yeah. the train. Yeah. Um, Go with the flow, man. That's what I did most of my life. And suddenly exactly. you're not. Suddenly, suddenly, suddenly you're not. You're controlling the flow. You're controlling the flow and you're looking yeah. at it. You're like, oh, suddenly I'm... Exactly. Yeah, and she yeah. came to a point where I'm like, where yeah. she... The, the, imagine, yeah. the imagination to go like, dude, but okay, I'm going with the flow. And now I can choose. Yeah. What do I choose to do? I can just choose everything, you know, yeah. like in that sense. And yeah. Everything, but like, just, yeah, just try to experience everything and try to be like, give out good, uh, good energy so that it just uh, hopefully dissipates and goes around, you know, like, it's, yeah. I guess a matter of energy transfer. Yeah, I get that. I get that. I like I like the idea. I don't believe in a lot of things, but I do believe that the way 
you can collect energy from people around yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is very Absolutely. real. You it's, cannot deny that. It's like, I feel like it's just, you know, projections of moods, you know, yeah. like, and obviously yeah. the mood is projected onto, like, yeah. physically and just around physically very, mainly, and you kind of feel yeah. it. Yeah. And then, and then you, your emotional exactly so mind connects to connects yeah. to it as well and you can absorb it you can learn from it and as long as you're self-aware yeah because i think that would that would be the key to really i'm, sure, I'm to pretty sure forward. everybody it's not like we're discovering something that's all so revolutionary everybody's gone through that you yeah. know and reach a point where they do For that sure every single human being has through this experience has yeah. gone through this gone through this experience yeah. you know like some of their focuses end up on things that are hard some of them yeah. ends up being focuses on things like that they don't even care about yeah, exactly. You know? um, but it always ends up, ends up in a life, basically. And ends up, up in a life, you ends know. Ends up in a life, and then it's up to you what you, what you make of it, right, yeah. boobs? <laughs> He's acting funny. So, I, so like that, that part of that part of my life where I decided, you know, I kind of realized, yeah, let's let's take control in that sense. Yeah, it was funny. I came up with one uh, one thing I said and uh, that's that I realized. I'm you know, like, this is I'm not going to be a millionaire with this profession, you know, and that's sense, yeah. you know, like yeah, I, I could really if I wanted to, but it have mm-hmm. to, uh, but it would take me to um, like a type of photography that I'm really not interested in, you know, like know exactly high fashion, yeah, uh, high advertising, you know. Um, Portraiture also, some portrait photographers get paid a lot of money, I think. Take but I think high it. fashion, high advertising is where the real bucks yeah, are. Ad- you know? Advertising and, and marketing is... And automotive. Well, automotive, it's all advertising, you know. Basically. Yeah, yeah, of course. That's where the big money is. And that's what I realized. I was like, I don't want to do that. Yeah. So I like the idea making of... Making the big bucks is not good. I'm going to make yeah. good money, I'm sure. Like, yeah, I don't yeah. doubt it. And, uh, the more you self-actualize, the harder you work. Yeah, no, you, you, you do work hard. I've noticed you work hard, yeah. man. You, you're, you're not as lazy as, as you appear <laughs> to be. So that's a good thing. I'm glad, yes. <laughs> yeah. No, I work hard, of course. Why not, man? Yeah, I work hard and play hard.